Okay, I can't even remember. Is it the 27th episode? I don't even know. 27th, I think, of Wayne's World and Kelly. I'm Kelly. So we have invited two of the most seasoned experts today to discuss expos, vendor shows, trade shows, whatever you want to call them. l and real big down here in the South. Um, there's other companies that do it. There's some small, so small association groups that do them. We've invited two of the most experienced people in the country, possibly planet Earth, to discuss these very important things about expos on how to A, be a expo vendor, and two, how to be a participant at the show. We're going to spend a lot more on the former, not the latter, because to be honest with you, we're, we're formers. Um, we're, we are ladders because we do go to expos. So... Without any further ado, let's bring him on. Woo! Hey, right here. It's 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 Wayne and Kelly because yes, we've been doing this longer than a lot of people have been on the planet, and we've watched. One of my favorite things is back in the day, I I when I worked for a company in D.C. We'll call it A1 Flood Tech. Um, we had a six hundred pounds of booth. 600 pounds. And guess who used to go do the show? A lot of times it was just me carrying these, these things in two wheels, four carts or four, you know, and it was, it, they were big, big things. Anyway, it was, it was a nightmare. Now, I don't know if you can see it back there. Yeah, it came right there. If I get my chair out of the way, that, that, that carries my entire booth. So uh, I can, I can throw it over my shoulder. I can carry it with one hand. It's fantastic. So, Wayne and I are going to talk about that for the next uh, 20 or so minutes. So before I start rambling all my wonderful thoughts on how to be a, a wonderful participant on the vendor side, speak, Wayne. I'm looking forward to talking about this uh, definitely because I just came from a very big show uh, in Illinois, and I'll definitely have some, uh, some thoughts and viewpoints on what I have seen in the past what I see going on right now and what I think is going to happen in the future. So looking forward to it and sharing our, our experience and uh, thoughts on how we can all get better when we're at these shows. In the recent past with COVID down here in Florida, we, we ran quicker than everybody else in the country, but I tell you what, the difference between what we're doing right now virtually, which we love because it does reach out to people anywhere who has me as internet connection um, person to person is fantastic. So I want to start off with a couple simple things. We get a 10 by 10 foot booth. Your height's restricted by, I think, seven feet on how high you can have your, your background. And they always give you a table that most people, I'd say probably 92.7% of the people put in front of them to divide them from the people walking by that hopefully want to learn more about what your services or products are. I always take that table and I move it to the side and I put stuff over there on the side. I do not like having worst part about COVID when they said six feet, <laughs> six feet, <laughs> like they got some measurement, like that was going to, you know, do something. I don't like having that three feet between me and potential people that I can do business with. I just find it extremely impersonal. I also can't, they always have two chairs there. Isn't that, isn't that kind of standard? They got the table, six foot table. And they got the two chairs. I take the two chairs and I put them over to the side in case somebody that is, um, you know, having a health issue can sit down. Otherwise, I don't want anybody's sitting in that chair, especially anybody that I work with. Um, if a guest wants to come in and have a seat, fine. But that drives me crazy. I want it to be very open. I want it to be very conversational. I also say very little. I represent LGC. I want to just make a quick connection. I'm not going to try to do a sales pitch. Some people call it throw up on somebody because they're not going to remember. There's 40 to 400 booths, depending on how big the show is. They're not, I would rather make a last impression with me. What I do is I don't have any with me. I have Hershey Kisses sitting on my little side table, not the front table because I put it to the side. And when people walk by, I always, now it's, it's, it's people kind of getting used to it. Some people now come to me, they go, hey, you want a kiss? Kind of shocks them. But it usually makes them smile and they realize I'm holding a 
Hershey Kiss, and we have a quick little conversation. Um, I did have one incident where an 80-year-old man wanted to punch me because they thought I was trying to kiss his wife. Um, <laughs> and, and the beauty part of it, and he laughed just like you did. And the best part was, like a minute later, and they were both tiny. They were like, you know, I'm 6'1". They're like maybe five feet tall, the two of them. Just this cute little couple, dressed real nice. I, I'll forget it. Remember it forever. Never will forget it. And she goes like this to me, right? And I, and I come down and she gave me a kiss on the cheek. One of the best kisses I ever had, you know, yesterday was Valentine's Day. Didn't have any. But um, it was just the sweetest thing. But it's engaging with people, making that quick connection. I don't want to go through a full scale show of what we do, how we do it, blah, blah, blah. Honestly, set up for the next connection, right? And I, I always give away a bottle of wine. Usually I give away a bottle of Freak Show wine or two on a raffle. Nice little simple raffle. Want to give away TV? I've got one. It's about to go on the fritz. If you want to give me one? Woo! So, what did you want to say? I, yeah. I got the beginning <laughs> start out of there. <laughs> Do you agree? Yeah, I, that? Because, you know, we're not simpatico maybe on this. No. Okay. So, we, we are 100% on the same page regarding trade show etiquette and how the booths are set up and how you don't want to create a barrier um, between between folks. Um, I know in the conversations we've had talking about this, about the do's and don'ts of a trade show, of course, you don't want to be on your phone. Of course, you don't want to sit down. But the last trade show I was at, CAI Illinois, is a very, very, very big trade show. We've exhibited there for 20 years. So I've had a front row seat on the way things used to be done and the way things are done right uh, now. A front row stand, and, not a front row seat. Front row stand. Good one. Very. Thank you for correcting me. So I knew that um, at some point we would be doing a podcast on this. And so I kind of paid extra special attention to the behavior of all the business partners that were exhibiting at the show. And I will say 99.9% .9 of the business partners completely violated every single thing that we are talking about. I don't believe that, that this message that we're going to articulate to people on the right way to do it is even going to matter. And I'll tell you why. It, it, people just don't care anymore. They don't care. Business partners are sitting down. They're on their phones. People are going by. No one is engaging them in that booth. Zero. So, yeah, you know what? Maybe this message will reach a couple people that are a lot younger than us. And they'll think, wow, you know, maybe I should really do that. Maybe I should engage them. Maybe I should remove the barriers. Don't hold your breath. No one did it with the exception of me and the gentleman that were in the booth. He knows that when he's with me, there's a way that we're going to conduct ourselves. So great. But you know what, Kel? I really don't think people care anymore. Well, and that, that's an they important don't. thing I want to talk about is that yep. you got to walk in with attitude. People, I, people that do what we do, I love expos. And, and maybe it's, you know, these aren't the right people to be doing this job. So we might want to rethink what you do for a living. I trade shows are difficult. I'm got to drive to Orlando, Tampa, and Naples in the next few months, as you will. And I'll be with you, brother. It's not as yep. easy as climbing out of my bed and and doing my job for my little fun, you know, south part of Florida, you know. But I go in with the right attitude, like I yeah. do every day. My I my oldest brother, God rest his soul. I think we have to say that when they passed. He's um he was much older. He's 18 years older than me. And he was in a sales business. And he he's every day he's like, I'm gonna sell something. That was his attitude. And he says, No one's gonna talk to me unless they're there to buy. And it's you know, and it's called old school, it's all attitude. And guess what? Right. He was one of the top salespeople in the country for decades. And it, but yep. it was a lot about attitude. And I and he was he just he could be having the worst day, he could be having back pains, whatever it was, he got in front of that person and boom, welcome to the Jimmy Coon show, you know, and he was real good at it. And it's, but it's attitude and that attitude. I'm glad you mentioned the phone. Holy smokes. And so many people on the phone and it's, there's a time. I love this thing. I, I love it for everything that it does at the right time. When I go out to dinner, flip it over and engage with the person you're at dinner with or the people you're at dinner with. If you're at a trade show, unless unless the world's burning down, and if it is, 
it doesn't burn in South Florida, so I'm not going to worry about it. It's, but it's so much about attitude, and you're right. I would like to think that myself and others that care about the business, care about it in Florida, you're new to us. Because my number was only like 92.38%, and yours was 99%. So in Chicago, yeah. apparently they're not getting the message like we're like, and, but I do. Now I had a gentleman from Canada next to me and he did all the things to become a business owner in, in, in um, the United States and just a great attitude. And he, I, I loved it. He took the chairs out of the booth and he and his wife who are business partners were running that thing and they were talking to people. And I mean, they were fantastic and they were from Canada. If anybody gets that reference from the news lately, um, but they're from Canada, but and and and, and these people they're 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 diehard U.S. citizens, you know, or, or they're they're future U.S. citizens, but they all they came with the right attitude into our country. They also came with the right attitude that trade show. I mean, it was great. I loved having them next door to me. We had people catty corner us, and we we were talking about it. Three people sitting down on their phones, looking down. And I said something to the woman early on, and she said, you know, we just do these trade shows so people know that we're still in business. We've got so much going on. We don't really need any business from this trade show. And I'm like, wow, I, I, I'm glad I'm not paying for your expo. You know, I, I'm a partner in this company. I never, I've always had the attitude that this was my trade show. And I was representing the company that was, that I was working for, the one that was wearing the, the you know, their logo. And I never thought it was just buying time till the day got. But yeah, I, I kind of personally think that we've reached, you know, kind of that tipping point of if nobody cares like we do, if nobody builds their businesses like we have, if the standards are not there on any kind of etiquette, and obviously we're talking about trade show etiquette, then does it matter? I'm going to ask you that if, if, if nothing matters to anybody anymore and those standards are gone, does what we do matter? You know, I, I had appointments after I, I went and met with clients already from that trade show. I have another one. I met the board and I met the property manager at, of two different groups at the last two shows I were at two of them that I've had meetings with to have one, I uh, already met with one at meeting with another one Thursday or Friday. I flipped to my calendar. Got a lot of meetings coming up. But they came in with the right attitude, and they came in looking for an owner's rep slash project manager uh, in both groups. That's what one of them actually crashed the Castle trade show. They were they weren't they weren't from Castle. I, I'm like, I think Castle's okay Whoa. with that. They they seem like you know why not? They, they're very you know, they were welcoming. I think anybody who came into the trade show, and they did promote it on LinkedIn. But I think they, they technically they, they were like the wedding crashers, but they were, you know, they were looking for trades and an owner's rep. Um, they, so they came in and that they, I love the way these are the people walking down the aisles, the, the participants. Um, I had one guy I talked to last week and he, I said, how was the class? And he says, I said, who taught it? I, I don't remember. What was it on? I'm not sure. I'm like, so this guy was just checking off his, his credit of, of being there. Other ones are coming in there saying this class was great. This person did a fantastic job. This attorney really did a good job, blah, blah, blah. Some people come in because they want stuff, right? They want giveaways. Right. And this is actually a pretty good giveaway. I'm, 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 I'm not showing you who it is because I like the company. And I don't want to, I don't want it to be a negative. Um, but I don't, I don't, I give away. Uh, it's, I can't, I don't want to reach out dropping things. I, I give written information. I don't give yep. away anything else. Um, I might, my arms getting twisted to give away pins or something. I have pin collections. I also have a box down here, pins, where I don't even collect things from expos and I still get all this stuff given to me. I mean, this, it's adorable. Got a little head on there. This is really cool. Sometimes when I get bored, I'm on hold for somebody, I start playing with it. I'm not giving that stuff away. I'm not going to, I'd rather spend that money on employee salaries than giveaways. And you got those suitcase and bag people that are just collecting stuff. They don't care about anything. And then they give it to their children for their grandchildren. And then it goes in the trash can. And then it goes to some big pile in the country. So 
you know, the, a couple more of the do's or don'ts that I just throw out there because, and every, I want everybody to do what they're what they're best with. I mean, if you want to give away these little things, that's great. I just don't know if it's going to mean revenue for your company and if it's ever going to be a big deal or not to, to give that thing away. Some things are creative and that, that's a plus. But what are your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, we're on the same page, but just let me ask you this. This is kind of a big question here. And I've actually, I talked to a lot of the, uh, you know, a lot of the uh, the cams at the show in Chicago is, are trade shows even necessary anymore? What do you think? I, I, I Well, I hope you can tell by my enthusiasm, I love them. I, well, I love them too. I love them too. But But you and I are business partners. We love them because we have a product and or a service that we believe our industry needs. I'm telling you that put on your hat and say that the folks that we sell to, a lot of them are saying that they're not really necessary anymore. What do you think? This last LNL show was packed. And there were a lot of, I love the term thirsty. It's, it's used for a lot of different reasons. These, a lot of these people were really thirsty for information. They were thirsty right. for finding out what was out there. So I'm a huge fan. I think yep. COVID, you know, and not and I, I like it from both sides. So um, here's a little twist. And I've, um, if you're listening, I've invited the secretary of the Department of Professional, whatever. I always forget how to say it because it's different than what we called it in Virginia. In Virginia, we call it D4. Um, was it the Department of Professional DPVR? Are you talking about Laura DeBella? Of business regulations. So I've actually in invited her to be on the show. Hopefully she will. Um, yeah. And she, she, and, 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 and I, cause I've communicated with her and, and the, cause the point is we are a new company. I've got to put through to get a class so we can teach it to give continuing education credits to CAMS, which is a community association manager that's in Florida. That's what we call our, our property. Yeah. We actually property. have a class also that that we teach that was approved for one credit you know towards the cams license so yeah very important very yeah. important to have mm -hmm. we have those at these expos and james lagreca my business partner who's also teaches on the college level who's got 30 plus years experience in what we do does a phenomenal class and i i like we we you know in the past he's done them in person and online it is so much better when he teaches that class and some of these attorneys do a great job teaching what is extremely important to understand in today's environment in Florida and, and everywhere across the country that the, the CAI Expo up in Washington, D.C. Wow, they what a show and they did a fantastic job every year. Tons of classes and and, and people wanted to I mean, they were they were they were had to close out each class early because they were being filled so quick and people showed up, you know, there wasn't like, and it was on a Saturday up there, um, but people showed up and it was, it was impressive but for those things. I think it's extremely important, but I think it's important for people to do it the right way. I think if the vendors or the business partners, whatever you want to call them, do a better job, I think then the community will, will appreciate it more. If you're not putting, if everyone's just standing there looking at their phones and sitting down and having barriers in between them, then maybe it won't be value to them. I think that, uh, you know, like I've mentioned l, &L a few times, because um, they do a lot of them in Florida. I think they do everything they can to provide a great show. And then it's up to the business partners to provide a good show after that. Um, but I mean, it sounds to me that you might think that they're not as necessary anymore. Is that what I'm thinking? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, I guess it kind of depends. I, it kind of used to be that like the party afterwards was very important. Um, now that doesn't seem to be like everything else. It's, it seems kind of fluid. The part that I like the most about what you said that can be tied to a trade show for continued success on the business partner side is try and become a speaker, get some good content, I have done that before. I taught a class on executive selling, which was phenomenal. I had people come up to me on the business partner side saying, wow, I learned a lot on how to approach a person 
within a company. One of the things that I do is I always get a lineup on who's going to go to the show. Who do I need to talk to? If it's an owner, if it's an executive, if it's a regional, if it's a cam, there's four different ways to have conversations with these people. So learn and master the four different ways to do that. Take it seriously. Know who your audience is. If you don't know who your audience is, you're just throwing you know what up against the wall, hoping it sticks. Don't do that. Absolutely. Again, a very successful way to fast forward your business. Number one, become an educated business partner. Number two, do a class. Number three, know your audience. If you can do those three things at a trade show, you will have a lot of success. If you go there, just show up, hoping the universe is going to ping you. It may, it may not, but it's up to you. No one's coming to save you. Get control of what you need to do and make it happen. Not that hard. Put a little effort in. We are going to have a happy hour. I haven't planned it yet, but I am planning it for the one after West Palm Beach. It's coming up uh, next week or so. Um, well, it's next week. I'll be there. I'll be yeah, there. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So, and we got a couple other surprises that hopefully we're going to pull off that we're not going to pull off. But we do that occasionally. And to me, it's never been the most important thing. I've always, that's always just sort of been, I probably haven't eaten all day. And so I want to go over there. And I do yeah. like to network with all of our, our, um, I, I call them vendors. I, I love that you call them business partners. So it's like a hot dog. I think of like a hot dog vendor. You know, I like business partner. Yeah, I, I want to I, 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 I think I'm it liking. is. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I kind of fought it like you did because I was always known as a vendor. But then right. about five or six years ago, the whole business partner moniker came across and I fought it because I don't like being told what to do. But then on my own terms, I right. thought, you know what? I, I like that. So it really whatever. is a great, it's a great term, but I'm I get I, I get so lost in my own head. But it, uh, I think it's I, I think the actual event is that what's the number one question people ask you towards the end of the show that other business partners ask you? Maybe they ask well, you something did, different than me. Did you have a good show? Yeah. What was it a good show? Was it a good show? I, yeah. I've never had a bad show. And here, James LaGreca, if you're watching, you're getting a little mad at me today. A um, couple of years ago, we were doing an event. And I, I told him, like, in January, I said, hey, there's one coming up on April 17th. It's a Saturday in Miami. And he's like, well, do you think we should do it? I go, absolutely. I, I, why? Uh, you know, Miami's a great area. That's where we'll, you know, our, 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 one of our offices is. So he's like, yeah, let's go ahead and do it. I said, I'm going to have to sign you up for to teach a class. Okay week or so before phone rings hey what's up james dude a saturday come on come on clock. no what what no i don't want to do it i go james um we talked about this in january it's like yeah, yeah oh man what was i thinking i was kicking him out i said james it's my freaking birthday and i'm signed up to do the show Right. We're doing it, and you're teaching a class. And he's like, ah, "Nice, sir. got me." You know, we go. Yep. Um. Uh. It was it was absolutely incredible. There it wasn't heavily populated by people that we could do business with, but we met a group from a a building in South Beach, who. You know, our cycle is funny. Sometimes it takes a long time to go under contract with somebody. Sometimes it goes really quick. With them, we met with a couple, we met with the board, we met with the community signing contracts. I mean, we went boom, boom, boom. From that, you know, I always like to remind James, remember that one time when you didn't want to go? You know, it's he hates me having yep. those little quills in my in my bag, but I do. But but you know, and, he, and, and so how important was that show? Everyone's like, there wasn't that many people there. I'm like, it doesn't take that many. It just takes the right ones. And it took the right engagement. And George and James and Carl and I were all there. And we had great engagements with people. And it turned into a, a, a very good result for us. And I think only can be a bad show if we did a bad job. Other people just were looking at their phones and, and sitting down. We were there to yep. play, you know. Yep. And not to pick on James, James is extremely busy. And I, I want to trade jobs with him for the world for what his role is in the company versus what my role is. And right. it's, you know, after a, a long week for me is, is not nearly as grueling as for him and everybody else in my company. I, I, and I, 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 I understand that, but our job is different. And it's extremely important for us to do a great, 
presentation and, and everything we do at these events. And I, I think they're, I hope they're here to stay. I, I don't want them to go away. I've got a couple small ones coming up um, in April. Uh, one, one's on April Fool's Day, which I think is kind of fun. Um, so <laughs> you really don't want me. I actually behave on April Fool's Day every year because people expect me to joke with them. So my April Fool's joke is of course. To do nothing. Now, I've done them in the past, <laughs> and that's a whole other show that I won't probably would never share um, while we're recording. Right. But I, I did one to some friends of mine that was just I, I, months in the planning. But one of the things that you and I bring to the table is we are prepared to have conversations with people at the experts because we know our business. Oh, yeah. And so I, I don't like it when people hire spokespeople for their shows. Nope. Um. I, I they got to be engaged, and 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 some people have people that are engaged, but they only do certain events for them, and I and I applaud that. If you're a smaller company and you can't bring people on full time, but they know what they're talking about at your shows, then that's a whole other thing. That's a professional expo person. But to just have somebody, you know, oh, you know, I brought my friends, cousins, you know, to come and do it. I had another guy next door to me. I shouldn't, I shouldn't say too much because I want to wrap people out, but this guy's he's now he's a consultant and he was with a company. He was, and so he says, uh, tell your elevator speech to, uh, to Kelly about what, what your company does and how they do it. And that's what he wanted. He wanted her to throw up on everybody as they came by. I'm like too much too soon. I said, you're a nice, pleasant looking person. Engage with them and set up the appointment. And I thought it was kind of funny. Here's a consultant that yeah. they're paying a lot of money to who's actually at the event. And I'm giving them free advice. And why? Because you and I care about the business. We care about the industry. Yes. We want everybody to do well. I want my competition to do well. You know, yep. I, if you look Amen. at my LinkedIn, there's a picture of me with one of my competitors. Why? Yep. We're friends. Yeah. We, we go after the business, the same stuff. And, and trust me, we don't discuss with that with each other at all. You know, and then until later, you know, I said, did you get it? Or, or, or no, sorry, we got it. You didn't get it. And I, and I don't like to throw it in my face because we win more than we lose. Right. You get that one. Um, but um, I I want to be, I, I, I just, I don't like bad competitors. But I, right. I, I want the, I want the owner's rep project management group always to do better, including us. But I want everybody at that expo to be successful and to really take a lot of pride in what they do. And I think that would make a big difference on how we do these things, but it's all about yeah. attitude. Yep. I love it. Attitude. That's right on brother. Perfect way to put it. What's attitude start with? I wish I had an A. So what I'm going to say is I want everybody to do a level 10. That goes out to Chris Kronzer, a friend of mine from DC and all my friends up in DC. Uh, level 10, there's going to be people chuckling at that. Um, there's Level 10 is important, but not the way. It was a training that we had where it involved a lot of high fives because it's 10. But give it your all. Give it 100%. Also, when you give it 100%, I like to start every morning with a rock and wellness shake. Rock and wellness. You can go online and find it. And uh, if I don't eat anything right all day, at least I have my rock and wellness shake. So I'm actually starting off healthy, you know. Awesome. I'm about to turn the yep. big six. I like to stay healthy. And when I want a healthy building, I call engineers like M2E. And uh, my building gets wet. I have mold. I call WRG. Those are some of our fake sponsors of the day because they're not really our sponsors. Um, Dawn, the paging <laughs> lady, will be at the uh, show next week. If you weren't going to say Don Miller's name, I was going to because we're going to make it a point to do that every time, Dawn. We, every we time. Miss I love it. We missed it the last couple of weeks, and I, it was killing me after we were done. Like, I didn't do what we were supposed to do because it's kind of a running joke. And, um, well, what I will tell you is that the last couple of trade shows, I had people coming up to me saying how much they enjoy our show. And, yeah. And a lot of times they go, are you really that much taller than Wayne? I said, we'll get lots of pictures when we're together next time you can see. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, it's really fun we that this has an impact on people because that's why we do it. I mean, yep. the only reason we do this because we we want the industry to be better, and and we enjoy it. And if we're bringing something to the table, and the guests that we bring on have been phenomenal. Some of the one I don't I don't like to advertise who we've got coming on. Um, why I don't know, 
I just, I want people to engage in what we're doing now. But some of the people we've got lined up for the next few months, because Wayne and I are both the bookers of the show. We're not like, you know, these other shows where they have, you know, Dave the booker and, and Eleanor the booker, and they have uh, Steve the engineer and blah, blah, blah. It's all us um, because our sponsors don't pay their bills because we don't bill them because they're not really our sponsors. Volvo of North America. <laughs> <laughs> Right. I'm just fired up today. I love it. <laughs> yeah, you are, brother. I'm looking forward to uh, to seeing you and the Florida gang next week in uh, West Palm. Yeah, and we're going to have a happy hour somewhere, so stay tuned. I will pr promote it, and you will promote it on um, on LinkedIn. And what's here's the cool thing how we do it. A lot of people, somebody will sit there, and they'll get five companies to pay a lot of money to sponsor a happy hour. And I'm like, you know, then it gets awkward. I want everybody and anybody to come who wants to come. We want the participants and we yep. want the business partners to come and just have an engaging, informal, you know, social opportunity. So a few years ago, I said, hey, we're doing a happy hour. And we tagged a bunch of people on it and just said, everybody pay your own way. And if you want to pay, you know, if, if, if you have a client there or a potential client there, and you want to pick up a drink or a nap for them, an appetizer, um, go for it. But otherwise, all we're going to do is find a place to have it. And we're just going to show up and we warn them so they'll have enough coverage. Because usually it's a little bit earlier than their regular time of people coming in after the lunch, before the dinner. But it makes for a great event. And we've been very, very successful at it. And some of my biggest selfies I've done in Florida have been with those groups. So um, and it's just, a, and it's, it's just fun, you know, and, and, you know, for the most part, everybody behaves, never had any, you know, no one's gotten dragged out or arrested. So it's, you know, it's a lot of fun. Um, but it's definitely something that where I like to, I like to change things and mix it up a little bit. And instead of having a, um, you know, it's proprietary, uh, you know, you've got to be invited and all that silliness. We just tell everybody where it's going to be and, 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 and have a great time. So I think it's going to be a great time. Um, I hear it's actually being advertised on a podcast right now. At, uh, yeah, I'm looking Beach. forward to it, man. Yeah, I think yeah, I think we're definitely. I don't know where we're going to have it, so I'm not going to say the place because I, I I really have to decide in the next day or two. Uh, Don Miller, get you know, reach out to me and she can tell us where to have it. She's the payment lady, one of our today's sponsors. Yeah. <laughs> and she's going to be there for people that have not met her. We've talked enough about her, so we'll be meeting. You'll be able to meet her in person. Yeah, and, and happy hour. And the Dawn's drink. one of those people that she's she knows asphalt better than most. Um, she's got a very open, engaging personality. She's standing up the entire time. She's not on her phone, and she she and her team do a really great job at expos, which is one of the reasons why she's our friend because um, we value what she brings to the table. But she really, I mean, she's not the paid lady. It's, it's, it was a, it was a woman owned company. Sold it to a, a guy, but Dawn's with them, been with them for several years. And everybody thinks she's the paving lady. She's really not. It's sort of like um, um, Victoria's Secret. This big secret was it was owned by a man. I don't know why that's a secret. You know, it's not too hard to figure out. But she, but she is the paving lady as far as we're concerned. And exactly. She paves the way to do a great, she's a great example of how you're supposed to perform in our industry. So how's that for a nice little endorsement? Awesome. I love it. Good way to end it, my brother. Hey, that's it. So, you know, if anybody has any questions, reach out to me on LinkedIn. If you have any complaints, see Wayne. Reach out to me. Yeah, reach out to Wayne. Wayne's the complaint department. Why? I am the I just... complaint department. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, hey, appreciate your friendship. Appreciate you uh, on everything you're doing. I'm, I'm looking forward for us getting together. And, uh, Amen, we brother. Little, we need to start doing a little bit more often since you're living in Florida. I love it. I will be uh, looking forward. I'm sure we'll be yapping before the show next week, but uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you in person next week, my brother and everybody else. Okay. And if anybody watched this show that is a business partner and isn't doing a good job, Wayne's going to rat you out. <laughs> <laughs> everybody have a good Thank week. Thanks, Wayne. Talk soon. All right.